the point of a detention center is to put people in a place where you can try and figure out who they are, if they're a danger, a criminal, a terrorist, all the propaganda, all the BS. Kamala Harris said that she would get rid of detention centers on day one. She said she would defund ICE. She wanted to defund the police. State police, local police are really the only ones who are filling the gap because the Biden administration has yanked the chain on the border patrol. So the whole thing is set up for the invasion. Revolution by immigration. For years I've been telling you why the border is open, because they want to replace the majority in this country. That is, they want the borders open so foreigners can come into the country, they'll eventually legalize them, eventually give them citizenship, they'll just change the whole demographics, or they'll just change the people who they claim to represent, so those people will vote for them and do as they wish. I call this, and I will coin the phrase, revolution by immigration. We're not in the middle of revolution by immigration. We're in the third of four quarters. That is the third quarter of revolution by immigration. You can see this all over the world with what I also call the second Muslim crusade. Oh, Mark, oh, Mark what? We're supposed to pretend these things aren't happening? There is a horrendous video that I saw last night. I really couldn't sleep after I saw it. Um, in Belgium. Belgium is overrun now from, with uh, people from the Middle East in that region of the world. And a lot of their towns are overwhelmed. You can see it in England. You can see it in France. It's all throughout Europe the second Muslim crusade. You can see it happening in the United States. I mean, just in the last five years, just in the last two years, we've never seen what we are witnessing now. But I'll get to that another day. I want to talk about immigration more broadly. So, revolution by immigration, the Democrat Party wants to change the citizenry, wants to change the electorate to empower itself. This is diabolical, this is evil. The purpose of immigration is to support or improve the condition of the citizens who you're supposed to represent. The purpose is not to replace the citizens. I wrote a long piece, or at least a smart piece, in National Review many years ago on this issue, and the Wall Street Journal called me a restrictionist. Oh, they shot an hour right through my heart, a restrictionist. Yeah, I am a restrictionist. That is, you follow the law. You're restricted to following the processes, the legal processes that are in place. And I want to remind you all, those of you who listen on radio know this, but not everybody watching listens to my radio show. Naughty, naughty. But here's the deal. The Wall Street Journal editorial page used to say, there needs to be an amendment to the Constitution that's five words long. Thou shall have open borders. Did you guys know that? That was the position of the Wall Street Journal. That was the position of Wall Street. That was the position of, of uh, the corporatists. It was also the position of, eventually, the Democrat Party and the unions, because the unions in the private sector saw their numbers shrinking. They used to be vehemently opposed to illegal immigration. Then they said, wait a minute, why fight it? Let's join it. We can eventually sign these people up as union members. Of course, they're screwing their current union members, but they don't care. They're looking 10, 20, 30 years out. And they figure the quickest way to get dues-paying members is through open borders. This is the truth. So even if it affects union membership today, they don't speak these words. I speak it for them because it's the truth. Even though it harms current union members, they're figuring, okay, but we'll bulk up our numbers in the future. That's the way the Democrats look at it. Okay, our cities, they'll be overrun. Oh, we may have murders and some rapes, and fentanyl may come across and kill 100,000 Americans a year, and illegal weapons coming across, and uh, women sold into sex slavery, and children sold into pornography, and all the hell, and inhumanity that comes with open borders. But in the end, we'll be a monopoly party. 
the vast majority of people coming into this country are not going to read the Constitution of the United States. Many of them don't speak English. Many of them are not literate in their own language. In fact, even the application for citizenship now, and I'll get to this momentarily, has been truncated. The time period to become a citizen has been truncated. And the citizenry has changed and is changing. And the handful of battleground states, when you think about it, Arizona, Texas is close to becoming a battleground state because of uh, illegal immigration and even legal immigration. You see what's happened with Nevada, Georgia, states that you would say, what's the problem? Same with Virginia. Well, there are changes taking place. The importation of individuals who you believe are going to vote for your party and will. Look, they gave me citizenship. On top of that, they're giving me free health care, free education, free meals. This is great. Biden, Harris, Schumer, the Democrats, those Republicans, you know, white racists. But the New York Times gave it away the other day. It didn't mean to. In a piece by Miriam Jordan, I want to share this with you since most of us don't subscribe to the New York Times, including me. But when I need an article, I can get it. And so if there's a reference to something I want to read, I read it. Immigrants are becoming US citizens at fastest clip in years. Wait a minute. Doesn't that concern you? We have an election coming up. Citizens get to vote. If I'm sworn in as a, in, as a citizen today, I can vote in November. If I'm sworn in as a citizen on the Monday before election day, I can vote. I'm a citizen. What's the hurry? What's going on here? The government never moves fast at the federal level, for sure. Under Biden-Harris, Harris-Biden, it certainly doesn't move fast. $42.5 billion to hook up individuals who aren't on the internet. They've hooked up exactly zero. You know the story, $7 billion for electrical vehicle charging stations. They've built eight of them, so about a billion dollars a bill. What's, what's going on here? It's the same regime that put in almost every federal office registration cards for people who come in for federal goodies most of the time. They get them registered right there and then. And in the vast majority of cases, certainly where there's blue states, you don't need identification. You don't need anything. Here's your registration card. They give free driver's license at a state DMV, depending on the state. Here's your driver's license. Oh, by the way, why don't you register to vote? They don't even say, are you an American citizen? Or No, you're not allowed to in these states. And then they tell us there's no fraud because the system is a fraud. The federal government is processing citizenship requests at the fastest clip in a decade moving rapidly through a backlog that built up during the Trump administration and the coronavirus pandemic. They're on the move. At ceremonies in courthouses, convention centers, and sports arenas across the country, well, that's a lot of people. Sports arenas and convention centers, that's tens of thousands of people at a time. Thousands of immigrants are becoming new Americans every week. We have an election that they tell us could be decided by 40,000 votes. Get the point? and becoming eligible to vote in time for the presidential election this fall. It's unclear how many of the new voters live in battleground states, but a number of the states where Kamala Harris or Donald Trump must win have large and growing numbers of voting age naturalized citizens, including Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. Wow, how convenient. These coincidences are just unbelievable. It says later in the story, the surge in naturalization efficiency isn't just about cleaning backlogs. Ready? They give it away here. It's potentially reshaping the electorate merely months before a pivotal election, quote unquote, said Ji Wang, chief executive of Boundless, a company that uses government data to analyze immigration trends and that offers services to immigrants who seek professional help in navigating the application process. So here's a company that's making a small fortune, maybe a big fortune, using the system 
processing applications telling you the truth. It's the replacement theory, which isn't a theory, it's a reality. It's potentially reshaping the electorate. I'm quoting, merely months before a pivotal election. And by the way, what about the midterm and long-term consequences? You're now a citizen, what does that mean? Chain migration. Oh, cousin in Guatemala. Oh, aunt in Nigeria. Oh, oh, great-grandchild in Somalia or wherever the hell they're from. You're now welcome to come in chain migration. So this is just the foot in the door. Again, the surge in naturalization efficiency isn't just about clearing backlogs. It's potentially reshaping the electorate merely months before a pivotal election, said Zhao Wang, chief executive of Boundless, a company that uses government data to analyze immigration trends and other services to immigrants who seek professional help in navigating the application process. He goes on, every citizenship application could be a vote that decides Senate seats or even the presidency. What's the likelihood that most of these new citizens are Republicans who believe in limited government? What's the likelihood? Uh, zero to none. In other words, de minimis. And the Biden civil service, the Biden politicians, they're moving this thing through, and they've been doing this. At under five months, application processing speed is now on par with 2013 and 2014. About 3.3 million immigrants have become citizens during President Biden's time in office. 3.3 million in three and a half years. With less than two months to go before the close of the 2024 fiscal election, so they really have their foot way down, pedal on the metal, to gas this thing up as fast as they can, especially in the battleground states. This is what's going on. The U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service took 4.9 months on average to process naturalization applications the first nine months of the current fiscal year, compared to 11.5 months in fiscal 2021. So they've cut it by more than half. Where the hell else in the government, the federal government, have they cut times like this? How about your refund? on your taxes. Has that been made efficient with new technologies? You get it, you know, half the time as you used to get it? No, nothing, nothing. This is the focus, voters. After taking office in 2021, Mr. Biden issued an executive order that sought to dial back his predecessor's hardline immigration agenda and quote, restore faith, unquote, in the legal immigration system. They always do the opposite of what they say. It's not about restoring faith in the legal system. It's about destroying the legal system. Among other steps, the order called for action to, quote, substantially reduce current naturalization processing times, unquote, with the goal of strengthening integration of new Americans. It says later in the piece, the Biden administration began deploying new technology and additional staff in 2022 to reduce the pending caseload of citizenship applications which had ballooned because of heightened scrutiny by the Trump administration and protracted pandemic-related delays in conducting the swearing-in ceremonies. Let me just say this. Kamala Harris said no detention centers. Wide open border, no detention centers. Anybody know what that means? Do you know what a detention center is for? People are coming in from all over the world, and funny thing, they're not in anybody's database. Well, we got the computers, computers to look at what? You got people coming from Iran and Syria. You got people coming from communist China. You got people coming from the Sudan. You got people coming from every corner of the earth. They're not in a database. And when they're coming from countries that we're hostile with or we're adversaries with, there is no database. And they're not gonna share a database. Oh, okay. And if you have potential terrorists coming in or Islamists coming in or whatever, Think they're gonna say, hi, I'm over here, I'm in the database? The point of a detention center is to put people in a place where you can try and figure out who they are, if they're a danger, a criminal, a terrorist, 
if that little child that they're holding is actually their child, not a child that they kidnapped to sell into sex slavery, or they separated families. No, they separated an adult from a child to make sure that adult belongs with the child. All the propaganda, all the BS. Kamala Harris said get rid of the detention centers, that she would get rid of detention centers on day one. She said she would defund ICE. That's what she said. Reimagine it. She wanted to defund the police. The police in many localities, state police, local police, are really the only ones who are filling the gap because the Biden administration has yanked the chain on the border patrol. So the whole thing is set up for the invasion. Revolution by immigration on so many levels. The numbers coming in, getting people citizenship, getting them to vote, no voter ID, getting driver's licenses to them as quickly as possible, getting them on the federal welfare state, free health care. You're paying for every damn piece of this. And then your vote is diminished. For all this and much more, sign up for Levin TV.